Well, I guess that's pretty much what I've known for is my innovative use of unusual materials. That's something I, I've tried to push the limits uh, basically my whole life. First of all, I started doing the wire sculptures because I had a neighbor who was an interior designer, Louise Mann, who's a terrific interior designer, and she wanted me to do these lamps, which I'm very bad factory worker. But, and so I was just praying that there would be some redeeming factor for, for doing the project, and there were a lot of them. And, and what happened is that I, I didn't realize it, but I kind of noticed in retrospect that I developed a, a way to mesh uh, the wire so that I can create something that's malleable like clay. So I create like a meshing strong um, framework that doesn't need much, any structure. It needs no armature to create a, create a large piece. The thing about birds is that as, as I've begun doing that, I, I somehow realized I had some kind of affinity with birds I didn't know about. But people pointed it out and I've come to recognize how that was a, um, you know, showed up in different times of my life. Because I'm, not a, I'm a very bad factory worker, I can't keep doing the same thing over and over again, so I wanted to learn species-specific birds. And, and so that's what, I also have no discipline, so I invented classes to get myself to go, to learn how, so I had to quickly learn how to draw uh, birds. And I, I used, I worked from uh, John Muir Law's book for, for the Audubon Society, which is a great book, and that got me started. And uh, to, I could draw birds, but I didn't know how I did it. So to do a class, I'd have to tell, try to tell somebody how to do it. But over the years time, since I've been doing this, like every week and several times, going out in the field several times a week as well, that I've developed my own style and my own method of observation and memory drawing. That's the thing that I'm, I've been teaching in the last, just the last few months, with like incredible results with people are able to produce satisfying results. So observing and having this, because when we're in nature, we're having the same experience the birds are. And we're sharing that, just like we do when we're not conscious of it. And just getting that kind of consciousness is, is incredible. I feel that by somehow doing Getting more people to be out in nature doing that, drawing and, and I call it uh, bird arting in public, that it raises the awareness of other people. Other people, uh, since I started doing this, have actually started going to the bird rescue when the days are open, and they're starting to include birds in their artwork. What, what I'm doing with the, the classes and education is, is letting people really observe and that know that they can do this, that they are observing, they're retaining it, and they're getting the whole experience. That, that you know, I think is pretty important with the, with the times we live in, just getting the, that connection with nature rather than the, the superficial nature of, of how people are interacting with the world around them. Well, you know, I, I did performance painting as a thir when I was 13. My mother had me do it in church. I did chalk drawings of organ music and poetry. Unbelievable. And she found this, this book, mail order, I guess, in some big chunky chalk, and she had, I had to practice during the week to get the timing right. So I started th at 13 doing that. And then in high school, they, I went to a parochial school where they didn't teach art, and I was the art department and I designed all the stage sets for you know, a couple of years there, and then they gave me my own building, and I taught um, art to faculty kids when I was in my senior year in high school. So I did big stuff, and, and um, 
and I had then, you know, classmates would paint the sets, and uh, so I started doing that sort of thing then, and I started in the, with the figure drawing that I was doing. Like I said, I bo easily bored, and I so I actually do it fast and and, and big, and. Um, I used to do silhouettes. I've also done live silhouettes, just come and cut out silhouettes and put them up of, of whoever's performing. And, and then I did portraits, and portraits are very small. <laughs> Fast, but small. And uh, I decided that I would do uh, stage performances with bands. And I, the first one I did was the Davis Jazz Festival, which I did for six years, in October, usually in October. And, um, and then I did other gigs around the area, yeah. And I've been at the, done it at the Spreckle Center, um, Wells Fargo Center for the Arts, um, Napa River Inn, backstage in the Community Center in Sonoma, um, other places, events. When I go sketching in the field, I get really happy. And, and it's the only thing that makes me happy as far as I, except for chocolate. <laughs> I like to go to places where you can see lots of birds, not like one, the entire hike, and, and, um, and a variety. And so I found some places like that. And just the personalities, seeing what they're doing, they're always doing something. And this is just something that's not in the bird book is the things they're doing, they're, the ways they're interacting. So I, I'm really interested in the bird culture. If you stay, stick around, they start interacting with you they're, and they do funny things. <laughs> it's, um, I don't know, it's funny. But you can take the time, which I don't seem to do often enough, to just be with some, in some situation like that and just see what's going on that's not anything you ever thought of before. <laughs>